Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So recently, Rosie from Teeny Tinkers uh, was having a stock sale and I was like eyeballing it up, okay? I was like, I wanna buy one of these, but I'm a broke beach, so I'm just gonna like stare at them <laughs> and manifest <laughs> that I'll have money, um, which like doesn't work. But she reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to customize one of her dolls. And I was like, you're joking. Of course I do. Um, so she asked me to pick one and there was like quite, she has so many sculpts by the way, <laughs> like, oh my God. Um, I picked Soda Pop out. Um, I think Soda Pop was one of her earlier sculpts. If you guys don't know Teeny Tinkers, I'm gonna link her down below. She has like a YouTube channel. She makes dolls. She does it all. I've been watching her for a while. Um, I'm pretty familiar with her content, I would say. Um, and I'm just definitely a fan. So this was a really cool opportunity. So this is Soda Pop. She's in the color Jones, which is like a deepish tan shade kind of on the cooler side literally the color of chocolate milk by the way because i was like drinking chocolate milk while working on this doll and i was like hey that's cool um but what are we gonna be doing so her face sculpt reminds me of a baby bear <laughs> uh i just think she has like this cute little little, little face it reminds me of a baby bear so i wanted to put her in lolita fashion but make her like a little baby bear does that make sense <laughs> i think it does um, and I'm gonna aim for Lolita fashion. I feel like a lot of the time I <laughs> aim for Lolita fashion <laughs> and then people are like, that's not Lolita. And I'm just like, okay. <laughs> so bear with me. It's either gonna be Lolita or just like very cutesy. If you guys wanna see me unboxing and reviewing this doll, um, that's linked down in the description box. So let's take a, like, a little look at her. So her face, again, reminds me of a baby bear. Very cute, super cute. Um, the body is actually her version one body. I believe Rosie told me this body is discontinued, um, but don't quote me because like my memory has been kind of booty lately. <laughs> um, there is a version two body, which is uh, smaller than this one and also has more jointing to it. So that's exciting. But yeah, let's just get into customizing her. So whenever I start a BJD, I wrap her head with some Saram wrap because I always start with the wig and I gotta protect her uh, beautiful little face from the glue. So I wrap it really tightly and then I take some stretchy fabric, also wrap that as tightly as I can get it and wrap rubber bands around her neck. Um, I'm not gonna lie, wigs are not my forte, but we're gonna, we're gonna do our best. Once it's adequately tight enough, I take some Elmer's glue and I put about like four four coats of that on the um, top of the head, letting it dry in between each coat. After it's all nice and dry, we're gonna be sketching in her hairline. I'd say like, um, give yourself more hairline than less hairline, cause you can't bring back a hairline. Um, but I'm just sketching it roughly in, I take it off and I cut it out. We gotta check the fit. The fit is like adequate. It's like not great, but like <laughs> story of my life. Um, so I made some wefts off camera with my favorite yarn that I need to chill with using, but I just like it. It's my comfort zone. Um, but I put this on the very front of her face because I'm gonna be giving her some bangs and we trim it pretty immediately so that I can sort of see the vision while I'm putting the other wefts on. Oh, I also painted her wig cap pink. Uh, this is like probably not necessary at all. I don't know, I just feel the need to do it. So let me live, okay? Um, but I'm taking the other wefts and I'm starting from the bottom and I'm gonna be gluing them down and working my way up towards the top. I'm trying to space these out adequately um, because I don't wanna give her too much hair because uh, it looks real weird when <laughs> they have too much hair. Um, which is why I only did one weft in the front for the bangs. I feel like that's all you really need for bangs. Um, sometimes people will add like a couple and it just looks like very weirdly big and just don't be that guy. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to space these out so she's like normal thick hair, not like freakishly thick hair. I sketched in the part line and I'm going to be laying down some glue, taking a weft and then putting that down backwards and flipping it. And I do this on both sides because obviously she has like two sides to her part. Um, so I do the one side and then I do the other side. Wow.
Here's her wig when it's done, and is it perfect? No. Is it pretty okay? Yeah, I'd say so. I think it looks like hair, so that's good. Goals. And then she needs some eyeballs, which you guys have seen me make me do you guys like a million times. But let's do it again, okay? How exciting. So I have this mold uh, that I think will work pretty well. I'm gonna be mixing UV resin and ink together. Um, I would say not equal parts of both, <laughs> like more UV resin than ink. We then spin that all together with a tiny little spoon and I fill up the mold. I do this pretty slowly. Um, I feel like doing it pretty slowly helps with air bubbles, but I don't even know if that's correct. Um, cause that's just like the way I've been doing it and I don't typically have a problem. But um, once it's all nice and filled, I do take a toothpick and just spin it around very slowly. This is to make sure that there are no air bubbles from when I was like stirring it and filling it up and everything. Um, air bubbles suck. They'll completely like ruin a base <laughs> and then you have to make another base. And nobody likes that. Um, so we pop it under the UV lamp and then pop out the eyes. For that eyeball texture that I like so much, um, I'm taking a two-part epoxy sculpt, mixing it together. I take a little tiny circle of it and put that inside each one of the eyes. Um, I'm using very little of it because you don't want to like overstuff it and then I smash it down with a dotting tool so it's nice and flat or flatter. We got quite a few eyes here and I'm going to be giving each one a pupil with a smaller dotting tool just like dabbing that down in the middle. And I have quite a few eyes because to be honest, by the time I'm done this, I'm probably not going to like most of them. I'm probably going to like like one pair. That just seems to be how it goes. Um, but once I'm done giving them each a pupil, I take a needle and I add that eye texture that we like so much. So I'm just taking lines and very different, various different sizes and radiating them out from the pupil. I give those about a day to dry and then I'm going to be coloring them with pastels. So I want to do various different colors. Um, so I did like a purple pair, a brown pair, a pink pair, and a blue pair. Um, and I genuinely don't even know, like I feel like by the time I'm done this, I don't know where the pink pair went. Um, I use pastels, like this might sound like a strange method, but I feel like it lays pretty flat on top of the eye texture, which we want. Um, once I'm done doing the base shade of pastel, I'm taking a slightly darker shade and tapping that into each one of the pupils so there's more variation to the eye. To emphasize that eye texture, I'm taking ink and mixing it with UV resin. The ink is in corresponding shades to the eye color, so this is like a purple ink, um, and it's mixed with, mixed with a lot of UV resin to thin it out. And I put a very thin coat of that down on top of the eye so that it falls into the cracks that we created with the needle. I pop that underneath a UV lamp and then I move on to the pupil. The pupil shade is just a color that's close to the base color but darker. So like for the purple ones I use like a dark blue um, and I mix that with UV resin and just put that in the pupil hole. Did the same exact thing with the blue ones. I think the brown ones are black um, and then I let it dry underneath the UV lamp. Once I'm done that I put a little coat of sparkles on top of the eyes. Pop that underneath the UV lamp. Then we dome it, which is usually the last step for BJD eyes. Um, I just put a slightly thicker little dollop of resin on top of each one of the eyes. Of course, then we put it underneath the UV lamp and let it dry. After they're all dry, I try them on the doll and um, I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't crazy about any of these. I felt like the purple was the best, but we're gonna put a pin in that. Finally, moving on to the face up, I spray the doll three times with Mr. Super Clear, waiting at 15 minutes between each spray and wearing a respirator mask, and we get into the, the face up. Woo, my favorite part. The eyes are most important, so we're starting with that. I'm taking a peach pastel and I'm coloring in the waterline. Um, I like to do this with BJDs because I find that a pencil is like a little too harsh. I also shade in her under eye bags because like they're one of my favorite things about the sculpt, honestly, and I'm not even being like. Like, I'm serious. <laughs> so, um, she has very little lid space. So, I basically brought a black line going up and covering up her lid space. I'm going to be going off the grid a little bit and just adding in my own line for her 
upper lid. Um, I wanted to keep with the general like aesthetic of this doll and just kind of keep it small. So almost like hooded because I like that about her. Um, but yeah, it's just like a brown line and it's going over the black line. If y'all use paint to add in lines for BJDs, specifically resin BJDs, I'm using watercolor paints, um, I would recommend having a Q-tip around because it just makes cleaning up those lines way easier. We added some like deep peachy blush to her cheeks, but we gotta add some to her nose, to her chin, to her forehead, to her ears. I also colored in her lips with a warm light brown pastel. I thought this would be cuter than my typical like red pastel. I thought it went really well with her skin tone because it's like deeper. I think it looks so cute. To give those lips a little bit more shading, I took a Q-tip and dark brown pastel. And I tapped that on the middle of the upper and lower lip. I fill in her nostrils with some of that dark brown pastel. I feel like this gives it, like it fills them in but doesn't look too extreme. And then I shade around her nostrils, her eyes, her lips. I decided I wanted to give her one more lid line, but I wanted it to be softer than like the paint that I laid down. So I'm taking that dark brown pastel and I'm just very carefully sort of sketching in a lid line above the one that I painted on and cleaning it up with a kneaded eraser. So listen, Linda, I don't care what skin tone you got, I'm probably gonna give you blotchy blush. So I took a darker peach and I just added that to the very middle of the cheeks. So typically for tanner skin tone, something that's been, that's been working for me is giving my dolls like a green undertone um, because I kind of just realized, like for example, with my husband, he's very tan. He kind of has like a greenish undertone, but his skin tone is very warm, whereas this skin tone is very cool. Um, so I don't think it was like as effective with this skin tone, but I don't hate it. I kind of like it, but I feel like I could have gone with like a better color if that makes sense. Since we did a lot of shading, I need to bring back highlights because they left the building. So I'm taking a very light peach pastel, it's pan pastel, so it's pretty intense. Um, and I'm adding that around the eyes and the nostrils. This is gonna look, I say this with like literally every video, this is gonna look very extreme, uh, but once it's sprayed with MSC, it dulls down a lot. She needs some of those good, good lip wrinkles. So we're gonna be adding those with a mixture of pencils to like the top of the lips and also some paint to like the bottom of the lips and like the top of the lips. I'm just flicking some lines going down. So again, we're working back in highlights um, and I'm doing this first with a pencil. I started with a white pencil and I was like, wow, that's a lot. So I switched over to a light nude and it was like way less intense, uh, which was a good thing, yeah. So I'm just adding some lines around the eyes, also the Cupid's bow. On to brows. So I was looking at some face-ups of Soda Pop and I came to the conclusion that just like simple sort of straight brows work really well on her. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna do. Um, and I'm just laying this down with an initial coat of pastel, brown pastel, and cleaning it up with a needed eraser. So like with everything with this face up, where there's shadow, there also needs to be highlight. So I'm adding some lip wrinkle lines to the lips. Um, they're just going next to the darker lines. I love freckles and beauty marks and just all of it. So I gave her some beauty marks around her eyes and her lips. We love a shimmer, so we gotta give her a shimmer. So I'm putting Macro Pearlix pigment all over her face. Now for my favorite part, the lashes. So I'm adding some on the bottom waterline. Um, I'm just doing quick little flicks out with black watercolor paint. And then I'm also adding just a couple to the outer portion of the upper lash line. I find that whenever I really, really love a BJD face up, there's a couple lashes on the upper lash line. And I feel like a lot of people don't do this because they opt for 3D lashes on the upper lash line, which I also do. 
Um, but I feel like just having a couple more lashes just sketched in or painted in on that upper lash line just looks so, so good. For the brows, I did something I've never really done before, which is um, I started on the outer portion of the eyebrow and then worked inwards. And I've seen a lot of BJD face-up artists do this, but um, I just <laughs> haven't really done it before. But it works out really well because it makes sense. You want that hair to be a little bit darker anyway. So you want to do it first because there's more paint on your brush. Last but certainly not least, I put some Tommy Gloss on her lips and her waterline. Oh, I, totally, I actually totally forgot. I added some on her nose as well, cause she's like dewy, you know? On to lashes. So these are my favorite lashes. They're from Amazon. Um, I'll link them down below. I think I'll probably find them. But I use tacky glue because I like that it's sticky. It just makes my life way easier. And I cut the lashes in half because that also makes my life way easier um, so that I can put them on in two parts and I don't have to really like fight with them to make them both stick down on both sides. So I put the glue down and then I put the lash down and then I work on the outer portion um, of the lash line and put that lash down. Once the lash is dry, there's kind of like this white sort of film and I don't like it. So I took some black paint and I went over top of it. This is how she looks with her lashes and I think she looks so pretty. So I wanted to like immediately put her eyes in just to see how it all came together. And I don't like it. <laughs> um, I just, I think her eyes are too small, these purple ones, the iris size. So I went through my stash a little bit and I found this pair that I made a while ago. It was like one of the first pairs of eyes that I made. And I think they suit her a lot more because the iris just looks a lot better, bigger. There's like that limbo ring around it. And I came to the conclusion that I think that I need to, I think I streamlined my eye process a little bit too much and I stopped experimenting and doing interesting things. Um, so I think I'm gonna work on that in the future because I just overall like these eyes way more than the eyes I've been making recently. On to blushing her body. So I just use the same tones that I used in her face, um, on her body like I normally do. And I love it. I just, I feel like it really brings out all of the beautiful sculpting that was done on this body. I put her head back on her body and like, <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> like, so cute. It's ridiculous. On to the part that I blow at. So I uh, wanted to make her overalls cause like I'm feeling them lately. Um, and I bought this plushy sort of fabric off Amazon. I was expecting it to be thicker. This is basically just velvet. Like it's really soft and nice, but it's just not the thickness that I wanted. So I cut out a pattern. I cut out pieces for her legs and then also the top and some straps. And the first thing that I do is I just gather stitch the top of the front of the pants. I took the square of fabric and I sewed it to the front of the pants that I gather stitched. This is going to be like the front panel of the overalls that kind of goes over her booba area. We got to sew the front and the back together, so I'm doing this at the pants. I feel like I'm saying pants a lot. Um, but I'm sewing up the side seam on one of the sides, one side of the side seams, and also one side of the legs. Um, I determined that the overalls were just like way too long, so I'm cutting them down a little bit. We gotta start decorating, it's important. So I have a ribbon and I'm taking the ribbon and I'm sewing it to the top front of the pants. I gather stitched each leg of the pants and I wanted to add, <laughs> I don't know if this is what this is called, but like a cuff kind of to the leg of the pants. So I'm sewing that in place. We're almost done y'all. So I sew up the other side seam and whatever leg 
portion is not already sewn up and I sew straps on and wow it's overalls I also added these little pearl buttons because she a cutie now she can't just be wearing overalls because that's silly so I gotta make her a shirt I'm just making her a simple shirt out of tulle um, I'm sewing the front and the back together at the shoulders On to sleeves because uh, we all need them so I sewed her sleeves in place good side to good side and then you just kind of flip them um, by the way I'm sewing this with clear thread which is like my new favorite thing it's so good I have a couple strips of fabric that I'm going to be gather stitching and I'm gonna sew one of them to the neckline and then the others to the sleeves the bottom of the sleeves I sewed pearls to the frill of the neckline and she's done or her shirt's done. Um, I also sewed on some fasteners on the back, but it's a look. On to her teddy bear beanies. So I swear this is what the pattern looked like. I was like, oh, I don't know about this, but that's, that's what it is. Um, so I also cut her out some ears, four pieces. So those together, good side to good side. And then we're going to be taking that weird shape pattern thing. Um, and I'm going to be sewing together the top portion of each one to the one next to it you should have all these sewn together but a little gaping hole at the top by the time you're done um so you just sew that together at the very end so i swore i filmed this but i guess i didn't um once it's all sewn together i cut two little slits at the top for the ears to slip into and then i sewed those into place i lost the footage i don't really know like i remember filming it i don't know i'm feeling crazy <laughs> Her little teddy bear hat needs a face because, um, duh. So I'm sketching one in with my Ohuhu marker. For the nose, it's just an upside down triangle and the eyes are just two little dashes. I wanted to add a little bit more to it, so I decided to embroider over that. The nose came out a little goofy, but like, just ignore it, okay? <laughs> Here's her hat, it's so cute. <laughs> now I suck at making shoes, um, specifically for BJDs. Like, I don't know, they get very big and I feel like I don't do them justice. So I bought her some shoes off of Denver Doll Emporium. This doll actually fits into SD shoes because her feeties are so big. Here she is, um, I adore this doll. I really love how she came out. And I'm really happy that Rosie from Teeny Tinker is giving me the opportunity to paint one of her dolls. Um, it was just a really nice experience. I was actually watching one of her videos recently uh, because I do genuinely like her content. Um, and she was saying how um, Soda Pop was one of her first sculpts. And she sort of fell out of love with Soda Pop because there was just a lot of negative reactions to her when she first released her. She did say that she's starting to like like her again because she started painting all of her soda pops, which I think is great. Um, I also just think that it's really sad um, that people in this hobby, I think there's a lot of like really awesome people um, that I've met. And I also think there's like just some negative weirdos. And if you guys are an artist, try not to let those people get you down because honestly you're doing the damn thing like you're making dolls or wigs or clothes or maybe you're just buying dolls and your dolls are like hella cute keep living your best life and making cool stuff because in my opinion that's just like the best we can do um and i will link rosie from teeny tinkers down in the description box if you guys like this video like this video let me know uh if you are a soda pop fan i'm deaf a soda pop fan like she's my girl okay um <laughs> But yeah, like this video, like this video, subscribe makes me happy, and I hope you guys are having a beautiful day. Bye!